Hey there everybody, it's me Cody on Microsoft, where today I'll be showing you Windows 10 build 15.002 for PC. This build is the latest fastering build for Windows Insiders as part of the future Craters update, which is expected to come out sometime of spring next year. I will note that these builds are buggy, and I wouldn't recommend installing them onto your main device. Now, there have been quite a few different leaked builds within the last month, but I'm going to suppose that not everyone's been checking in with what's been going on in those leaks, so I'm going to be comparing the changes in this build to the last fastering build, 14986. Alright, so starting up here with Microsoft Edge, there are actually quite a few things that have changed. Um, we've already seen Edge blocking sites marked as malicious, but Edge will now start blocking untrusted Flash content unless you specifically allow that page to run that content. Developers will also be looking into the new Payment Request API that's supported by Edge. This isn't completely finished yet, um, so you won't be able to test it, but you will eventually start seeing sites utilizing this API, which will help manage your payment information through Microsoft Wallet. Now, Tab Management. You'll notice right away that there are several new buttons up in the title bar, which I'm not so hot about personally, but they're there. The Tab Preview button pulls down all the previews of the tabs you have open so you can see them at once, a feature that I'm sure most of you have seen before. On the very left of the title bar, you'll also find two new extra icons. These are part of a new system called Setting Tabs Aside. The second button from the left sets the tabs aside, so that all the tabs you have open will be whisked away into this other section here on the left. Um, note that these tabs aren't actually loaded that are set aside, and will remain set aside in this section even after you close out Edge and open it back up again. Clicking on these set aside tabs will load them back up, or you could just restore all of them which will pile them all back onto your current session. The UI is pretty self-explanatory beyond that though. Setting tabs aside is for situations where you might want to keep a bunch of tabs open for something later, but want to have a separate clean tab experience for something else. Or if you think that that's really stupid, you can of course open an entirely new Edge window by right clicking the Edge icon in the taskbar. Now, as many of you are used to, when opening Edge back up from an unexpected crash or sign out, um, Edge will open back all the tabs from that last experience that you were just unexpectedly kicked out of. Um, now though, you will be taken to a new blank tab asking you, uh, do you really want to keep all those tabs or should I just close them all out for you? Um, which is something that I will find quite useful. Because sometimes when I close all my tabs and open Edge up again, it brings all those tabs back when I didn't want them, so this will be nice. Now while I'm in Edge, I might as well show you that new share panel that we've been hearing about for so long. Um, it will now open by default in any app that has the share button, which is a nice new little panel here rather than the Windows 8 style sidebar menu, um, which works just as you'd expect. Speaking of old things, Windows 10 has yet another screenshot key combo. Uh, in addition to print screen, Windows key plus print screen, volume down plus print screen, and function plus Windows plus space, Windows key plus shift plus S is now a screen clipper option that will allow you to copy a certain area of your screen to the clipboard. The start menu in this build has been updated with a feature that Windows users have been asking for for a very long time. Folders on the start menu. Yes, you can now have folders for pinned apps on the start menu simply by dragging an app tile on top of another and boom, you have a folder. Um, people who have used Windows 10 Mobile will be very familiar with this as it works pretty much exactly as it does on Windows 10 Mobile. Um, but yeah, it's really nice. I hope that in the future, though, you will also be able to drag folders from the app list and pin them on the start screen, uh, which would be really nice for large program suites like Microsoft Office or the Adobe Suite, just to have all of them in one folder to keep your start screen more organized. Um, but in this build, it's a little bit of a bug where you can't pin anything by dragging it. So keep that in mind if you're going to be downloading this. I've noticed that these builds have been paying particularly close attention to Chinese language support lately. I will skip over these changes for now though because I don't speak Chinese um, and I would have a hard time communicating to any Chinese audience about these changes, so just know that Microsoft cares. It's not just Chinese either though. General accessibility across the board from enhanced speech and narrator support to braille and high contrast. All these changes to language and accessibility with the ultimate goal of making Windows as easy to use for anyone, despite their linguistic or physical differences. 
Ease of navigation is being brought into the Windows settings with a new pane on the right which suggests things based off of what section you're currently exploring. Sections like the new Bluetooth or other devices option, which manages all the different devices you have connected to your PC. As you can see here, all the different things like my Surface Keyboard and even my Bluetooth mouse are listed, um, which is quite nice. If you have a Surface Dial, you will also be able to explore some new options in the Wheel section of the Settings app, with the ability to set custom commands to individual apps and things with certain wheel clicks. The Display section has also been changed up a bit, um, with some of the more commonly changed settings brought up to the front, such as the Display Resolution now being on the first page. A little bit farther up here, if you haven't spotted it already, is an option for a reduced blue light mode. You've probably started hearing about it a lot lately, with programs like Flux or iOS 10's Night Shift Toggle. Um, for those who aren't aware though, what this basically does is makes the color temperature of the display warmer, filtering out blue light which in the dark can mess up your sleep cycle or put a lot of extra strain on your eyes. The warm temperature matches the warmer light of the surrounding artificial light sources in a room around you, and is a lot less harsh on your eyes. The intensity of this effect, of course, can be changed with this poorly visible slider right here, um, but yeah, <laughs> it's not very easy to see. Personalization is going to see some interesting changes as we move forward with the Creators Update too. Of these things, Windows themes are being brought back. You can set and save themes here, which seems to be able to save the background, color, sounds, and mouse cursor into a theme pack. In the future, I imagine that you'll also see a link to the store to download more themes on this page. The color settings now have a recently used colors available at the top for you to choose from. They claim this is here that so when picking through colors to find the perfect one, you might accidentally change your mind and say, oh no, the last color I used was better, and that it's so much more convenient to have it at the top rather than clicking on the color right here again. But that is a blatant lie. The real reason for this can be seen in the screenshot on the Windows Experience blog, but not actually visible in this build. A button for a custom color picker. Huzzah, huzzah. Um, that will be much appreciated, something that Windows users have been asking for since Windows <laughs> Windows 10 was released, where that option was removed, pretty much. Um, but yeah, we have seen this color picker before in a video released by Microsoft uh, not too long ago, and it looks like it's finally here, just not enabled for some reason on this build. Probably too buggy. Microsoft is continuing to work with improving the support for high DPI displays in Windows. Among these things, certain GDI-based applications can now have DPI scaling changed by the user as they wish. By exploring the compatibility tab of a program's properties, you'll see a checkbox to override high DPI scaling behavior. When this is selected, you can choose whether you want to use the application scaling system, the system scaling, or enhanced system scaling. This is something that many users have been asking for a while, and I'm glad to see that it's here as well. Something that I'm even more excited to finally be seeing addressed are improvements to the desktop icon placement and scaling system. Um, the classic issue of your desktop icons being scrambled up when changing your display orientation or docking to an external display is finally being looked into. Uh, I haven't had much time to play around with this, but I'm glad to see that it's finally being addressed. Most people, I imagine, wouldn't have noticed it immediately, so I would like to add that along with all the other little visual glitches that bother me, um, the tearing in window resizing is finally gone. Um, the visuals when resizing a window is now much, much more smooth looking. Um, you don't have any of the responsive delay or tearing that you had before if you pay attention to the right of this window, the right edge, I mean, of this window while I am resizing it on older builds, you will see that it is is tearing up and it's like lagging behind it's not quite aligned with that right edge very well but now if we switch over to build 15002 you will notice that the edge of the window now moves very nice it doesn't jitter all over the place and tear and misalign it's it's smooth now which is something that I'm sure a lot of people will be happy with as Windows insiders have requested, MS Paint has been brought back and doesn't redirect you to Paint 3D like it had in the previous build. Sort of a weird decision in my opinion as I feel that we need to get to a point where MS Paint is no longer needed. Um, with tools like 3D Paint and especially the Windows Ink tools now being available. 
Speaking of which, Windows Ink. The Windows Ink icons are among the first wireframe icons that I've seen in any Windows 10 application that are colored, in this case corresponding to whatever color you have selected for that tool, which makes a lot more sense. The Eraser tool now has some more options as well, with a couple of new point erase tools rather than just the stroke erase. Now we just need these sparkle pens from OneNote and the experience will be complete. Now, as with all these features, there are also quite a few issues, so be aware of that. Like I've said before, I highly discourage that you install these builds onto your main device. Not because they'll cause your device to explode, but because you'll probably run into some pretty buggy issues that will prevent you from getting certain work done. Anyhow, this has been a quick build update video with me, Cody, on Microsoft. If this video was helpful, make sure to subscribe and check out OnMicrosoft.com to continue receiving updates about the future of Windows 10, Windows 10 Mobile, and the future Windows 10 Creators update. Thank you, goodbye.